Steve, Tom, it's great to Clement. meet you uh, <laughs> here in Geneva for the WEF Cybersecurity Conference this week. Uh, we're going to have a quick chat about cryptography management and the threats that quantum computers are uh, creating for cryptography and encryption. Uh, Steve and Tom, maybe you want to introduce yourself uh, shortly, just in one sentence. I'm Clément Jean Jean, a lead go to market for commercial customers at Sandbox AQ. I'm Steve Ramsden, um, CISO for a, a non profit here in Switzerland called the Global Fund, and um, I, I operate in across 120 countries. I'm Tom Patterson. I'm Accenture's global lead for uh, quantum security and have been focused on quantum security for a very long time. I'm thrilled that it's now in the public and is, uh, there's real solutions to be had. So, Steve, we talked about cryptography. Uh, we're not going to go into technical uh, details today, but can you uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, as a CISO, what kind of pain points do you see with uh, the lack of management around cryptography today? Well, for me, a lot of it is around confidentiality, obviously, of sensitive data. Um, when you're dealing with all sorts of types of data, especially in healthcare, specifically healthcare is, is, is really, for me, um, a high-tech vector. So it's really about confidentiality. It's also about compliance. It's about policy management. So for me, really, it's, it's really very fundamental. It's a building block to the whole of cybersecurity for me. And uh, Tom, I think there's also some, some kind of business continuity or resilience around cryptography management, like uh, how to avoid those silly outages caused by certificates or deprecated cryptography. Well, certainly, and Steve, I know you, you see this and, and fight against this every day. There's, there's issues about cryptography not being used properly throughout, throughout an organization, being able to spot that, being able to, to fix that and, and get going. Uh, but as Clement just mentioned, uh, just certificate management, it's still we see it being done paper and pencil or you know, an Excel spreadsheet or something as opposed to an organized way. And you, know, you tell us, I mean, what, what happens when one of your certificates expires unexpectedly? You know, what <laughs> what yeah. does that <laughs> cause? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously um, resilience is key, denial of service. So for us, it's very important to ensure that the, the, we, we're on top of all the certificates in the organization. And really, it's fundamental to this whole of the cryptography for um, protecting the organization. So for me, it's really, really fundamental. And the work that you, you do, I mean, you're, you're out there trying to change the world and, and save mm. you know, millions of lives in, mm. in some of the, the most desperate situations. And so when you have an issue, you know, we, we, we all want you uh, <laughs> to succeed. And, and one of the things about cryptography, as you start to look at it, it's more than just, did you encrypt this file? It's cryptography is the basis for commerce. It's the basis for people buying things online. It's the basis for identities online. All of that is under underpinned by cryptography. And it, it, we have to be able to trust that, that it's done properly or we're in real trouble. It's all about the process at the end of the day. You've got to have strong processes in place. And really for me, it's fundamental to the whole, the whole of the, um, the organization. And it's one of those um, areas that not many people are aware of or know about, but it's really, really fundamental for, for all organizations, whether it's healthcare, whether it's banking, telcos, governments. It's just fundamental um, for the whole of the, uh, the digital economy, really. Um, so yeah. And do you think people understand it, or do you think it's, it's sort of black magic uh, <laughs> to the majority of the people you work with? Yeah, I think in, in my context, it's very much black magic. The whole of um, my space is really I sort it out and it's black magic. But, I, but, but it's actually very complicated. It's very, very important for CISOs to be on top of this. And it's also very important for us to be looking at the future of where this is all going to. So for me, it's always what's, what's around the corner in terms of risks. Yeah, and, and you clearly, you've got secrets you've got to protect. You've got <coughs> intellectual property that needs to be shared yeah. but still protected. And you've got to work around the globe. So you've got a lot of data in motion happening that needs to be protected and, and needs to stay protected long into the future. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, um, sharing data in, in a global environment, it's, it's very important that end-to-end -end encryption's in place, ensuring as well that, that the key management is in place too. So really, it's, it's kind of a key process. As I say, it's, it's, a, it's a process management um, question really as well. Right. So it's super important, yeah. And one last thing ab about that, it, it's, it's more than your organization, mm -hmm. but it's your entire ecosystem that you interact with. All your third parties, all your vendors, all the SaaS providers and cloud providers and identity providers, management providers, all of those systems all share information, your information, mm -hmm. but they, they need to do it in an encrypted way that's, that remains trustworthy, right? 
everything, the whole end-to-end -end of the supply chain, I mean, the really the full end supply chain has to be secured end-to-end. -end. And, and what would happen if you suddenly lost the trust of your encryption? Well, that's a great question. So <laughs> that's where it, it, it kind of, we have to be very careful because you've got confidentiality of people's data. Right. We've got also um, other commodities like medicines and we have to ensure the whole end-to-end -end security of, of the supply chain. Which is why we love the fact that you're a forward-looking, yeah. award-winning CISO <laughs> and you've got this, you've got your finger on the, the pulse yeah. of cryptography today, mm -hmm. explaining it to everybody that you work with and, and showing them the value, mm -hmm. but also looking with an eye towards the future and keeping them safe going forward. The important thing for me is it's always what's coming next and it's always looking the couple of years into the future and I, I think this is where the CISOs have to always be on top of their game. They've always got to be learning what's the new threats, what's the new emerging trends of technology, what is the new as well paradigm shift in, in, in technology coming, such as AI, such as also quantum. So yeah. for me, we always have to be looking where the ball will be and not where the ball is today. Yeah, yeah I fully agree. That, that's something we see a lot with, with our partners at Sandbox AQ, yeah. starting with yeah transforming the way that cryptography is managed inside large organization. Exactly as you described, putting more process, more automation, more agility in existing processes yeah. around the management of cryptography. And um, the quantum horizon or threat is a very strong driver uh, to do that. Even if the benefits are, you know, I'm going to improve my compliance posture, I'm going to make sure that my policy is better enforced now, so my, my data is going to be better encrypted now in 2023, 20, 2024. Yeah. Addressing the quantum threat as well is clearly a key benefit for these organizations because they know the time to migrate is going gonna, is gonna to be much here. But Tom, maybe you can say a, a bit more about the threat. And uh, Yeah, I mean, the, the threat is real and, and governments are understanding this now and, and uh, major whole sectors now are, are starting to understand this now. And it's really, a, there's, there's a win-win benefit to, to looking at this. One, you know, once you get past the, you know, is, is quantum, is that science fiction, is that spooky, you know, well, get past that and you realize it is real. It does affect my organization. There are things I can do about it. It's not going to break the bank if you get proactive and sort of do it in an orchestrated way to, to go forward, starting with figuring out where you're vulnerable and then working on the remediation pieces that, that make sense over time. That's the, the plan that we think every organization is going to go through this decade at some point. And are they going to do it you know, before that headline blares that, you know, that someone's built a quantum computer that can break all of our encryption? You, know, if, if you don't want to be that, that person there that's scrambling the day that, that your boss reads that headline. You want to be the person that is prepared for that, to prepare now and then relax later. And that's the opportunity that uh, you know, at Accenture we're focused on with our clients around the world, working with great uh, products like Sandbox and, and partners with like Sandbox, we're able to come forward and, and bring a complete solution uh, that, that makes sense, that, that you don't have to explain away uh, to everybody in your organization that there's these benefits. You're finding lost uh, in encryption, you're finding, you know, deprecated encryption, you're finding you know, certificates that are about to expire the day before they expire instead of waiting until you hear about it the day after and, and, and all sorts of scrambling. So a lot of this is, is being proactive and getting the benefits today and being able to relax through the future. Steve, where would you start this you know, uh, forward thinking, yeah. future looking <coughs> initiative for uh, that, Quantum? That's a really great question and that's one, one thing that I've been looking at just recently. So. Um, we have this day called Q Day, um, and then there's there's eight steps to 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 the path to be prepared for Q Day, and and basically this this is the eight steps that we do. I'm going to hand over to, to <laughs> Tom about this. <laughs> he can talk more about the eight steps. Yeah, well, and, really and, fundamental. and they're very practical. And we think every company in the world, an organization in the world, is going to go through this at some point this decade. But it starts with coming up with a strategy and, and a quantum specific strategy. Understand where you are with your cryptography, understand where you are with your quantum risk, and make a plan for that. And that strategy is really important to set up. And then you learn things in doing that, like it's more than a technical issue. You need to get purchasing involved. You need to get business involved and have a quantum council and a crypto council that really is, is empowered to solve this. And then as soon as you figure out what your plan is, you need to start to enact it. And the next step is, is discovery or, or creating an inventory, looking through all of your networks, all of your enterprises. You know, most organizations have no idea 
where all their cryptography is buried. It's embedded in all sorts of things, and they, may, they, don't, they don't even try and pretend. So when they get asked, they're like, I just don't know. <laughs> and so finding a way, you can brute force it. You can go through with your existing tools and like, let me scan this, let me look at that, let me see what this readout is. Um, or you can go through it with an, in an organized way using a, an orchestrated approach, using an AI backend that can categorize what they're seeing tie that back to the risks that you've identified in your strategy, and then give you a, an actionable set of, of real life English language uh, type of, of results to move forward. And then when you have that, you can also start to apply that to your partners and your ecosystem partners, figure out what they're all doing because you want to make sure everyone's going to be you know, on the same page and still be able to work together. And then you can start to figure out what's the best way to remediate for me. It's only at that point can you figure out how big, how big is this bread box? How much is it going to cost? How long is it going to take? These are the questions that every board should be asking their CISOs today. And we want the CISOs to be prepared in advance of that call so that they know, well, we don't know until we look. So let's come up with a strategy, let's do the discovery, and then we'll be able to tell you, you know, what, we're sh what we recommend going forward. And then we'll have an organized, actionable plan that's proactive, that keeps us ahead of the game and gives us these benefits right from the beginning. And you know, that's where we want companies to be. And we're seeing a lot of, said, governments um, in critical infrastructure companies like the finance world and communications world and uh, healthcare, like you're in, all of these areas are, are jumping on this now and, and getting ahead of the game. So building a strategy, creating the capability to inventory your existing cryptography to understand uh, what you have, then um, remediation and onboarding, of course, the ecosystem, not looking just at your IT, but also... It's coordinating the yeah. ecosystem. You don't have to do it for everybody else, but you have to know Hopefully what everybody not. else yeah. is doing. <laughs> and that's really important, or things are going to start to break when you turn them on, and, and nobody... Nobody can allow that, no CISO can allow that. So a lot of testing goes into the process. Once you've figured out what your remediation plan will be, uh, you know, we've created a, a quantum security test lab where we can recreate our client environments, bring in the right tools and try it and figure it out and, and you know, keep working it until we, until we have it working for our client and then bring it in and start to, to slowly uh, push it out through the organization. So it's a multi-year step and think back to when the data encryption standard was broken by traditional computers and we knew we had to move to the advanced encryption standard. We knew that for 10 years and yet it still took that long to figure out what the new go-to algorithms would be and then to get everybody to agree to change. And I'm sure there's some ATM machines around the world that still have old DES chips in them because it's not, they haven't broken yet, so they're not gonna change it. Uh, but you know, that's a, that was a 10 year process. We know that this change to a quantum security the quantum algorithms uh, set, which now have been decided on by NIST and others, but the move is going to take at least multiple years. Maybe we've learned a thing, a trick or two, maybe we've got better tools, maybe we've got newer ideas and we're able to shorten that time frame, but it's not something that's done in a couple of weeks and you just press a magic button. So you had to plan for that. As you're moving to the cloud, incorporate quantum security. As you're pushing out zero trust, incorporate quantum security. As you're building anything that, like identity that's supposed to last more than a few years, you've, it's your right, it's your, your fiduciary responsibility, really, to make sure that the encryption that you're relying on will survive uh, the life of your system. And that's, that's possible now. I said, that doesn't break the bank. That means it's an organized, orchestrated approach and when you roll it out. And that's the kind of thing that the forward-looking CISOs like yourself are, are looking at. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think every CISO now, if, if they really need, they need to be looking at this. If they're not, they should be. Because for me, it really is something that's coming and we have to prepare. So for me, really, every CISO should be looking at this, um, in my view, and it should be formed part of the strategy moving forward. So um, this is why I'm looking at this now. And also CISOs as well, it's, it's all about a learning process. Mm -hmm. There's always new emerging um, um, things coming in digital. We always have to have this mindset of constantly learning about new new things. So for me, this is also a learning opportunity for CISOs to learn about a new world. So it's also a very interesting world for, for CISOs too. But you get wins right away yeah. and you get to relax later. That's, hey, a, exactly. that's a good thing. It's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think we can wrap up on this. Thanks a lot. Great. All right, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you.